What happens when you combine speed and power? In boxing, fans are mostly attracted to boxers who deliver an entertaining match along with impressive knockouts. Only few are able to stand out in the ring. The baddest man alive, the most feared heavyweight that could easily destroy his opponents with one punch. His name is forever written in the Boxing Hall of Fame, Iron Mike Tyson. The new era of boxing is considered to be one of the best. Fighters like Canelo and Floyd Mayweather contributed a lot to the sport's greatness, but the sport evolves and so do the fighters who keep delivering fights that make viewers jump from their couch. The welterweights are considered to be one of the most explosive and fast boxers, and for good reason. The legendary Sugar Ray Leonard showed the world what happens when a kid with a dream who is dedicated to the sport can achieve in the ring. In his career, he achieved 36 wins and 25 KOs. Floyd Mayweather is among the best the sport has ever witnessed, scoring over 50 wins and zero losses, making him the record breaker of Rocky Marciano. But a boxer from Long Island, New York would prove to be one of the best welterweights as his style is unmatchable and his spirit unbreakable. And that could not be anyone else than Errol Spence Jr. Today, we will take a look at Errol Spence's first steps in life and his career in the boxing world. Welcome to Boxing Matrix. Enjoy this video. Errol Spence was born on the 3rd of March, 1990, in Long Island, New York. Errol, from the early stages of life, was an athletic kid, and he was often seen playing football with his friends but his career as a boxer wouldn't start until he was 16 years old, when he first stepped foot in the gym. One day, Errol's father took Spence Jr. from school and drove straight to the boxing gym with the vision of his son becoming a professional one day. His father was integrally involved in Spence Jr.'s career from the start, carefully picking his coaches. According to some sources, Muhammad Ali inspired Spence Sr. to involve his son in boxing. Ali was a great titled fighter, and the first fighter Errol's dad knew. From the very beginning, his biggest strength in the ring was his speed. He started in amateur tournaments and was the best in the country three years in a row. It didn't take long for him to become the national champion in the years 2009 to 2011 and got the Golden Gloves in 2009 to 2010. 2011 was a special year for Spence, as he got part in the World Amateur Boxing Championship, but couldn't make it to the top as he lost in the quarterfinals. In summer 2012, the Long Island native was named to the USA Olympic Boxing Team. He reached the third round, where Spence lost the fight to Indian welterweight Krishan Vikas. After suffering a loss in the Olympics, Spence sensed that it was time for him to go pro. And so, a journey began. On November 9th, 2012, Spence made his professional boxing debut in the welterweight division. He fought Jonathan Garcia, whom he defeated via knockout for the first time in his career. After only a month, he would repeat what he had done in a fight against Richard Andrews, where he won by technical knockout. In 2013, Errol had eight fights and had won all of them. By that moment, Errol reached 10 wins, 8 of them by knockout. The first time where Errol would be seen by a massive audience was in 2014, when he fought Ronald Cruz on Showtime. The fight got to the whole 10 rounds, and Spence was looking really good, as he was training really hard for that win. Good body work by Spence. That's one of the things Spence does. He's never been knocked down. So, like I said, he needs to take him into the second half of the fight. That's where the test is going to come in with Errol Spence. Just, you know, bending his legs just to right him out. He's just the center point is right. <laughs> Hard left hand. Spence, three punch combination, all got there from Spence. Spence has to make this physical. He did it for a brief moment in round two. Very impressed with 
Good old Spence, and he's doing everything right tonight. For all the world, he looks like a, a future champion against an experienced fighter. Excellent work there by Errol Spence. Yeah. Look at the way he changes up the left hand to the body, to the head. Oh, nice. And rounds with him and then Anton Smith. <laughs> Punch combination, two of them got there. Good left hand right there. Cut Cruz leading in. Is well, we have, we have nothing bad to say about this guy for good reason. <laughs> Shows everything. Yeah. Spence is averaging 83 punches per round. <laughs> well above the yeah. hand division half. Double left hand. Four punch combination again. Cruz on the ropes. Oh, oh big left hand for that. Spence. Yeah, they might do it way. there. The corner might stop it there. That, that, that's... Double left hand there. Yeah, straight left hand. Just hitting him at will. Before the bell rang, you saw Errol spin. That, you know, that shows what kind of experience, how experienced this kid is. He was trying to look at Spence, round number nine, and look at his activity rate. Three punch it. combination. I, I'm just amazed how accurate he is. And that's working. He's not sitting down so much. He's... He's been doing really up in his speed. More, more speed. More flurry punches. That's what he's got to do. In the end, Spence won the match by decision, and he became the main event on Showtime by unanimous decision and still undefeated. The rising star crushed one opponent after another. By the time when ESPN recognized him as the most prospective fighter of 2015, he recorded 19-0, defeating Alejandro Barrera in his last match. To compete in the championship battle, Errol had to win two fights. In April 2016, he defeated American Chris Alghieri, and in August 2016, he defeated Italian Leonard Bundu. And so he would find himself as the IBF welterweight official challenger. Kel Brook, Errol's next opponent and the IBF welterweight champion, did not come in the fight as the odds favorite, as he had surgery on a broken right eye socket shortly before the fight. The first round was a cagey affair, in which the champion worked well behind his jab and kept distance with the well-prepared American. Body shots. Can the American cope at this level? Is he a sensation in the making? Or will Kelbrook prove formidable and ruthless as so often he is? Errol Spence, I mean, this guy is a quality fighter. He's going to sit back. He had a sad point jab early on. There's a thunderous all those years ago for the British belt in Glasgow. And he's knocked every single port side around his face, but he is just southpaw momentarily. Circumspect from Spence Jr. so far. We're trying to unload a body shot early on. That'll be the tactics. He is a welterweight, or whether he should have gone up to super welterweight. In the third round, both fighters traded more blows, but the challenger gave the first real sign that he had what it needed to worry the champion. This was just a bit too soon. But he was too raw. Errol Spence. A good left hand there, and he's got real power too. 18 knockouts. Very dangerous. Solid chin. Was buzzed by. Sechenko was. Spin up on the ropes and they left his head out to dry it. And Ryan Hall from Spence went in and I think Kelbrook felt that and realizes now he needs to tighten his defense off. Light on his feet. Errol Spence trying to work out on the inside up close. Screaming all rounders at ringside. 
the fervent support for Kel Brook. And Errol Spence with a wry smile on his face. The fourth and fifth round saw further trading of blows. It was compelling. It's the Texan who's got set to ring. Real tension here, and there's the right hand of Kel Brooks. Laughing eventually, but having none of it, and coming back to the left hook. And it's a nice shot, but Spencer just sending a nice reply himself. Really beginning to warm and show any weakness to his opponent. Brook is backed up on the ropes and shipping some of these body shots. Well, Spencer's the one that won't be needed. Kelbrook has said in the build up, he thinks both of them might tie in the final round. I can't see that happening because he's able to manhandle Spencer here early on in the post, pushing back with that left hand and lean on him. It might be that natural sign that Vanchez has got. When it comes down to weight and down to stamina. Brooks' eye swelling grew more visible in the eighth, and while he continued to fight hard and apply pressure, it was clear he was in trouble. Got back behind his boxing now, Brooks, but he doesn't want to be on the end of that punch. Oh, he's blinking the game badly. Kel Brook, the eye's giving him yeah, the confidence back. Good shot there from Spencer Brook, looking troubled here on the road. Holding on again, Kel Brook in the eye against Errol Spence, but he's gone down on one knee. He can hardly see out of it. And he showed so much balance, but can he get up and continue? I think he's going to send it out. For Cal Brook, it was a night that promised so much, but ended in gut-wrenching failure. The welterweight division at the time was very competitive, and Errol was not the only one conquering opponents. A guy from Nebraska was rising and was knocking out nearly every single opponent he faced, and that could not be anyone else than Terence Crawford. Terence had beaten John Molina, Felix Diaz, and Julius Indongo all by TKO. Crawford was the WBO and WBC welterweight title holder. He was in a position that Errol was working so hard to get in, and he would not let it pass like that. Since both of them were now kings of the division, fans wanted to see a fight between them so the best boxer would thrive. But negotiations didn't go as well as expected, and the fight was never officially announced. Though Crawford and Spence have since been going off on one another, trash-talking and calling each other out. In 2017, Spence and Crawford met, and it didn't take long for things to heat up. You know how much you weigh. Fat. That's what you weigh. I'm not fat. Fat. I'm not fat. That's fat. It don't matter. Yeah. It don't matter. Grab it again, son. Grab it again. Grab it again. We talking about now, but you talking about how big it is. It's fat. Grab that. Yeah. I guarantee I'm gonna crush you. Grab that. Okay, let me ask you a question. Don't try to go to the body. What are you talking about? Don't try to that little. Don't try to go to the body. Don't try to go to the body. It's gonna be easy work. Hey, I'm sorry. You. I'm sorry. It don't matter. I'm going to knock you out, bro. Oh, you that, getting hurt. That's fat. You got hurt by Gamble. That's You got hurt by Gamble. Yeah. You got hurt by El Campo. Like you got hurt by El Campo. Man, I got hurt by El Campo. And you got hurt Pull by El uh, Campo. And up. you got hurt by El Campo. When? Now we seen we seen you get wobbly, right? Wobbly. We seen you get wobbly. Then what? We seen you. Huh, after matter. that, it don't matter. Huh, wait after that. Wait till I hit, wait till wait I hit you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You gonna look like life, you gonna look like Benavidez. You. He had one leg. You gonna look like he had one leg. leg. He had one leg. I'm, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make you a stanky leg. What you wanna bet on it? What you wanna bet on? You can bet a hundred thousand on that. Let's bet a million. Easy. Let's bet a million. The rivalry will live on until we finally see them both in the same ring. Errol, now the IBF world champion, was hunted by the division's best in order for them to get to have the title. Among them was Sean Porter, 
who had just beaten your Dennis Ugas and had retained his WBC title. This was a fight that made Errol even more famous and liked among the crowd, as Sean was not an easy opponent, and Spence had to prove if he was worthy enough to be at the top. The fight started with both fighters pressuring and letting each other know that they came with the intention to win, no matter the sacrifice. Porter's unorthodox, pugnacious style baited the favored Spence into many wild exchanges, starting with a thrilling stretch of the third and fourth rounds. rarely waned for the rest of the bout, with Porter constantly forcing a tough fight. Spencer knocked down Porter with a spectacular left hand to the head, with a minute left in the 11th round. In the end, Spence went on to win the fight by decision and was now the unified welterweight champion of the world. He had gained everything, but he would soon be faced with tragedy. On October 10th, 2019, the welterweight king was seriously injured in a car accident. He was not wearing a seatbelt and was thrown out of his vehicle during a smash which saw his Ferrari flipped multiple times. His white Ferrari was destroyed. Spence Jr. was rushed to the hospital where doctors reported he was in serious condition, but expected to live. He took a year off to recover, and that was for his own good. In December of 2020, he would return to the ring to face Danny Garcia in order to retain his WBC and IBF titles. He was happy to return once more and was thankful to be where he was, even after suffering so many injuries. Spence Jr. looked like his old self and showed no signs of rust after connecting on several jabs early in the first round. When Danny's 
good at. You touch him, he'll play tag with you really well. He doesn't want to sit on the ropes, I can tell you that. Right? Spence coming in with that left hand. Left hand there from Spence. Spence is usually content to slow. And there's a right hand from Garcia. Straight up the middle, able to land. And you know, Garcia's right hand is not coming straight. He's come stop him later on in the fight. That could happen. Oh, got caught in there. A little off balance with the jab. After he threw the haymaker right hand. Yeah, but... able to drive Spence back a little bit. That could be significant. Yeah. Probably boxers. But there's a hard left hand by Harold Spence. Drives Garcia back. By the middle rounds, Spence's southpaw jabbed caused Garcia's left eye to swell, and he gained full control over him. Okay. I don't disagree with you. Right. I think, oh, great, great combination by Spence right there. Well, Danny needs to move ahead a little bit and not get caught. That's right. I'll tell you what, Spence landed one and Garcia countered, and it looked like it wobbled him. Garcia, known for his power, was unable to hurt Spence and truly check his chin. When the fight came to an end, Errol Spence was the winner by unanimous decision. All three in favor of the winner. And still, the only defeated unified WBC and IBF welterweight champion of the world, the truth, Errol Spence. His post-fight interview was something his fans loved, as he stated that he is back, and for a reason. Um, basically, it was just like what my shirt says, it says I'm back, you know, and, um, you know, it was just a more of a grateful moment for myself. Like, man, all this hard work, you know, from this year and a half, you know, led me to this point. So, um, you know, basically it was just, man, like you worked hard to get to this point. You deserve to be here. Now it's time to put on a show. Let's go. So I wasn't nervous at all after being a year and a half off. I wasn't nervous at all coming and walking here. After six whole months, there would be an announcement that the legend himself, Manny Pacquiao, would face Errol Spence in order to defend his WBA welterweight title. Errol was now face to face with the man who was the hardest opponent of the TBE, Floyd Mayweather. During the press conference, we saw both fighters respect each other with no tensions or trash talking. On the 10th of August, 2021, it was announced that Errol Spence would not fight Manny as he had suffered a torn retina and had to get into the surgical room immediately. Due to the fight being highly marketed across the world, it could not be canceled and Spence had to be replaced by another challenger. And that was no other than your Dennis Ugas. Ugas shocked the world by beating Manny Pacquiao by unanimous decision. And it was indeed Manny's last fight. A great career came to an end. On April the 16th, Spence will face the fighter that took his spot and retired Manny Pacquiao, your Dennis Ugas. Spence will put his IBF and WBC titles on the line, and it will be his second fight after the car accident of 2019. But the real question is if Ugas can do damage to Spence and therefore claim the titles. And that is a question we will soon know the answer to. A kid from Long Island, New York, that was introduced to boxing at the age of 16 years old, found himself among the best in a division so competitive, yet so respected by the people. 
Errol is a true example of what a man that believes in himself and is disciplined can achieve in his life and in the sport. Comment down below if you think Errol Spence will win his next fight against your Dennis Ugas, and if so, by which way. This is Boxing Matrix. Thank you for watching.